Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're gonna show you guys how to download, install, and use Microsoft Access 2024. Before we get started with today's video, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 10, Windows 11, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll leave links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, guys, so before we jump onto the computer, let's just make a quick note of why use Microsoft Access when you may already be using Microsoft Excel for your data needs. The main reason for this is that Access can handle millions of records very efficiently, and Access also allows us to create relational databases. For example, we could link customers and orders. Okay, and then the last thing to note is that Access is only compatible with versions of Windows 10 and versions of Windows 11. If you want to run Access on Mac, you need to run Windows 10 or 11 on a virtual machine, such as VirtualBox. All right, let's get started with downloading and installing Microsoft Access. All right, guys, so we're gonna navigate first to setup.office.com. If you have yet to purchase Microsoft Access, feel free to check out the links in the description. And if you've already purchased, be sure to have your product key handy. This is something that will typically be emailed directly to your inbox. Let's hit get started. Last up, we'll need to sign into our Microsoft account if you're not signed in already. One thing to note is that we need to make sure that we are signed into the correct Microsoft account that we want this app to be installed to because it will link your key to this account. All right, let's hit get started. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and paste in our product key. We will blur this on screen, but again, you'll just paste your product key and we'll hit next. Here we can see the product key with the access logo. So let's go ahead and hit redeem. All right, we've successfully redeemed our product key. And so at this point, we're gonna to go to subscriptions here on the left-hand navigation pane. And we're gonna scroll down until we see access. We can see it right here. And let's go ahead and click install next to access. All right, I'll leave this as default and I'll click install one more time. All right, it's downloaded the EXE and I'm gonna click open file. I'll hit yes on the pop-up and we'll skip to when this is done. All right guys, so access has just finished installing and if I hit my start key, I can actually see it right here. Or I could also just type in access and we'll see it come up. Let's hit enter. All right, so this is the home page here of access 2024. We might also call this the file tab, which we will show you guys how to access this again later once you're actually inside of a database. So just in terms of some basic navigating here, we have some panes off to the left. We have a home tab, we have a new tab. This is gonna give us access to more templates. We also have open. So if we're working on a recently accessed databases, or if we want to select a file from our PC or from OneDrive, we can open it directly from here. And then in addition to that, we have account, and this is going to give us account options. We also have feedback and we have options, which is our settings. So for the purpose of today's tutorial, we're gonna start with a blank database. So let's double click into this. And as we can see, we're actually forced to save the file before we proceed. So I'm gonna rename this to customers. For the demonstration, we're going to be creating a customer list for you guys. And I'm going to change where I'm saving it. Actually, I think the documents folder is fine. So I'll press OK and let's hit create. Now, if you already use Excel or Word, for example, or any of the standard Office applications, you're probably already familiar with the general layout of the application once you're inside of a document. So in this case, we have a variety of tabs. We have the home tab. This is going to give us some of our most commonly used features and text formatting, stuff like that. Underneath each tab, we're gonna have something called a ribbon. This is basically this little stretch here, which covers all of these tools. And these are separated by these little lines here into what we call groups. Groups will generally have similar features together. And so this is the application's way of making it somewhat easy for us to find commonly used tools and we can find them in different categories. So in this case, we have file, this is gonna bring us back to that menu that we were at earlier. I can hit the back arrow at any time to go back into my document that I was working on. We also have a create tab, external data, database tools, and help. And then in addition to that, we have some tabs that might actually change a little bit. And so this one here is called table fields, and we also have a table tab. These are both open because I currently have table one, which is created by default, and that is selected. Let's go back over to the home tab and explore some of the different views. As I can see, if I want to change my view, it's actually going to ask me to save my table. So let's go ahead and save the table. We're gonna call this one contacts here. So I'll press okay. And now as we can see, I can click the drop down arrow here and we can switch easily between our data sheet view or the design view. 
All right, so with the basic layout understood, we're also not gonna go through quite everything today, but we plan to release intermediate and advanced videos later on, so be sure to stay tuned for those. Now, to start off, let's go ahead and start populating our table. Now, I don't actually wanna use this table right here. Let's go ahead and create a brand new one. I'm gonna right click and hit delete, and it's actually telling us here that we have to close the database object, then delete it. So basically what that means is if I hit this little X here to close this down, I can then right click on this and hit delete. Let's select yes on this pop-up and I can easily make a new table from the create tab. Let's go ahead and hit table here. And again, just like we did earlier, we will need to save this table and there's a few ways we can do that. First is to right click and hit save. All right, and we could save it that way. And again, I could also try to change the view. Let's go to the design view here and it's going to ask me to save the table. All right, so I'll go ahead and save this as customer list and I'll hit okay. Now we can pretty easily switch between our views as we're working on our database. We can right click on our list here and go back to our design view this way. We can also change the view again from the top left, but also the bottom right. So we can very easily go to our different views right here. All right guys, so let's go ahead and start building out our customer list. Now for this, I'm actually gonna keep this fairly easy. So let's get rid of this row here. I'm not gonna use an ID or an auto number. So let's hit delete rows and I'll hit yes. In our field name, I'm gonna type first name. The field name is defining the record. Now we can also apply a data type to this. So short text is probably what I want in this case, but we do have other options here. For example, we could hyperlink, we could make this a yes, no, or a currency, or a date and time. So we have lots of different options around the data type. All right, and then next up, we could enter a description if we'd like to. We might type something that's relevant to our field name or data type. Now, there are a few easy ways to navigate around the different cells here on the table. Just like Excel, I can use my arrow keys. So I can go left on my arrows, I can go down or up, and I can very easily jump around to cells. We could also use enter and tab or shift tab and shift enter. All right, so again, I can type in my next record here, which in this case, I'm gonna make last name and I can very easily hit enter a few times to bring me down to the next row. Now for me, I'm also going to have their email address. This would also be short text. I'm gonna have their address, another short text. And then lastly, for my data set, I'm gonna have their purchase SKUs. I've got all the field names that I need for this particular data set. Let's go ahead and switch back to the data sheet view. And here we're getting prompted to save. Let's go with yes on that. And now we're gonna see something that looks pretty similar to Excel. So we have our columns with our headers essentially. And these are our records. So we have first name, last name, email address, and purchase SKU. Now below this here, I may want to actually start to enter the names. So let's start with myself. I can add an email. We also have address right here. All right, and then I've also entered my purchased SKU there. So I put my first name, last name, email, address, and SKU. Now I can also click and drag to select these just like Excel. And if I double click between columns, it will auto resize to fit all of the information. So now we have our first record. Now, as we create records, it's gonna keep track of this force at the bottom. This is gonna show us how many records that we have. Now we can also use this little set of tools at the bottom to search, and it's gonna show us what we're looking for on our data sheet. All right guys, so for the next part of the demonstration here, this is where I actually have my records here. This is in an Excel workbook. And let me just expand this so you guys can see. So as we can see, I have first name, last name, email, address, and purchase, excuse. And I have all these different records here that are currently just on this Excel sheet. So I actually wanna grab these and I wanna import them into Access and we can very easily do that. All right, so first off in Excel, I'm gonna make sure I have this saved in an accessible location. I'll just save it to my downloads as an Excel workbook. All right, and let's go ahead and save that. All right, so I have this file saved in my downloads on my computer for easy access. Let's go back into access here. And first, we wanna go ahead and close down our table. So we'll hit this and we do wanna save the changes. So we'll select yes. And then let's right click on this and we'll hit import and we can hover over and click Excel. All right, so at this point I can do a new table, but in this case, we wanna continue building into our customer list. So we'll do append a copy of the records to the table and then we'll select our table from the dropdown list. Ours is customer list and once we do that, let's go ahead and actually grab our file. So I'll click browse and downloads. And here we have our fake customers Excel workbook. So I'll click that and let's hit okay. This is giving us a preview of how our records are going to transfer over. Now I have my table formatted in Excel in the same way that I set it up in Access. So this should transfer over well. Let's go ahead and hit next. All right, and at this point I can hit finish and let's go ahead and close. Now if I go back to my table and 
double click this to open it up. All those names that we just had on our Excel sheet are imported into our table. And we can see now that we have one of 51 records shown here at the bottom. All right, guys, so at this point, the next thing that we're gonna show you in this demonstration is how to create a form. The form is gonna give us an additional way that we can very easily enter records that are gonna to save to our data sheet. So this is actually fairly simple to do. Let's go over to the Create tab, and instead of Table, now we're gonna hit Form. Now, this form has not saved yet, but we can already preview our records that we have currently. So I can go to next record or previous record. It's gonna reflect that in this form up here. Now, we do actually have the ability to change the design of our form. And to do that, we can simply click over to the design view here. All right, and now with certain text selected, for example, I may want to capitalize these. And then back in the Home tab, I have access to text formatting. So if I wanted to change the font or change the size of the font, I could easily do that from here. For example, let's try a different font and let's try to make this maybe a little bit smaller. So again, we have lots of options here in terms of text formatting and how we wanna change the design of our form. So for example, I can click the bottom and drag up to reposition this or resize this. Now, in addition to all of these resizing options that we have here, we could add in things here like hyperlinks or page breaks, and we have lots of tools that we can access here. Now, just like the table that we created earlier, if I right click here, I can click save and Let's save this as not customer list, but maybe customer form, and I'll press OK. Now on our left-hand navigation side, we have a table section showing up, and we have forms. So now we can click between these. Let me just go back to the layout view. So I can go back to my table here, and I can go back to my form by double-clicking that, or we could also click between these tabs here. Now here is where we can observe the relationship between this form and this list, okay? So let's say for example, on my name here, Gabe Martin, I can change this product SKU. In order to do that, I need to go to the form view. It's gonna let me edit the content of the text. So again, we went from the layout to the form view. And let's say I wanna change this SKU from 7646 to maybe I want to do 35, 7635. All right, and then I'll right click and hit save on this. And now if I go back to my customer list here, we can see that that is updated on my SKU. So let's try it again for another record just to show you guys how these two are related. Maybe Drew now has a Gmail account that he wants us to use. Enter that, right click and save, or I could also just go to a different record. Look at Drew Edwards here, and now we have his Gmail account. All right guys, the next thing we're gonna show you is over back in the Create tab, and we're gonna create a query. A query is going to allow us to prompt a question to our records, and we'll be able to get an answer. All right, so for the purpose of, of today's demonstration, we're gonna leave this as a simple query and I'll press OK. Now, if I want, I can take any or all of the available fields and place them in the selected fields. I can do that by clicking this little arrow right here. So let's go with the first name, and maybe I wanna go with the address and purchase SKU. Let's hit Next, and I wanna open the query, so let's hit Finish. All right, same thing with the form, and with the table, we can right click to save this query. I'm gonna double click to open the query now. Again, let's go ahead and switch our view. So I'll go back to the design view. And if I want, I could add a simple criteria. Maybe I wanna see all of the customers I have by the first name of Taylor. I'll type in Taylor into the criteria box here and I'll click off and we can see it in quotations, which means that it recognized our text successfully. And now if I go over to query design here, we can go ahead and hit run to apply that change. And now we can see we have four customers named Taylor and they are all different tailors. Now I can continue to update and run this query with additional information. So let's go back into this view here. So for example, I could remove their addresses. Maybe I don't wanna return their addresses in my query. I click run again, and it's gonna be updated now with just their name and the product SKU. I could also drag more fields in here. For example, if I wanna know their last name, I can drag that here. And with that checked, I can run the query again. And we're now going to see their last name in here as well. All right, guys, and the last thing we're gonna show you today is how to make a report. For example, if we run a query, we might wanna maintain some kind of report or export a report on that query. So if I go to my query here, okay, and then we have to be here in the data sheet view, and with our query selected, let's go ahead and click report. This is on the create tab, so we'll click report. Let's go ahead and hit yes to save the query list. Okay, now we're in the design view right now, so if we wanna make changes to how our report is titled, we're gonna make this called customers named Taylor. And just like earlier, we're able to change the design or the overall layout of this report if we want to. Now, in addition to our views that we've been switching to this entire time, we also have a print preview. So we can view a preview of what this would look like printed on a sheet of paper. Now, what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm gonna export mine to a PDF and I could change this to landscape and I could modify the size and margins. 
I could also just go ahead and print this directly from here. There's a print button right here, but again, I'm gonna go ahead and export this directly as a PDF. And we'll save this to my downloads. Let's hit publish. And now we can see my report that is successfully exported. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything that we covered, feel free to drop those in the comments down below and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll leave those links down below. As our channel continues to grow, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas to make. We strongly encourage you to comment those down below. Most subscriber video requests get made into actual videos on our channel. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.